Today we're going to be unboxing the FIO CP13. So this is the portable stereo cassette player that everyone seems to be talking about right now. And when I found out that FIO had released a better quality cassette player, I knew right away that I wanted to try it out. So this is my unboxing video of the FIO CP13. Before we get started, I'd like to say that I grew up during the 80s and 90s, and the cassette player was a major part of my life. I took mine with me everywhere. <laughs> I almost never left home without it. So let the unboxing begin of the FIO CP13. And I like the fact that it comes in a box, which is nice. It makes it feel more premium. During the 90s especially, a lot of the Walkmans or cassette players from that time came in that plastic shell-like casing. But this is nice. This feels like I'm opening a Walkman from the glory days of the Walkman. I like to try to keep the plastic on just in case I don't like it and I choose to return it but I don't think that's going to work out I think I will be satisfied with it and you notice here it says to scan the QR code to check the authenticity that way you can know that you're not getting a counterfeit unit a fake cassette player I'd like to show the top of the box, but I think it might be easier to... Okay, yeah, here we go. Let's pull her out. Ah, it's kind of... Hmm. Okay. She doesn't come out easy. Come on. Hmm. They sealed it airtight. There we go. Now it's coming out. So this is the quick start manual here. And this isn't a Japanese unit. These units are manufactured in China, like most electronics nowadays, unfortunately. But China makes decent electronics. But back in the heyday, you know, anything Japanese was usually of better quality. Oh, wow. Look at this. All right, so this is the Walkman here, and this color is sky blue, which I believe is the most popular color. And I think they might be sold out of this particular color, but I was able to find it on Amazon. I was trying to buy one that included the case, too, but unfortunately I couldn't find one that would arrive in a decent amount of time. They were selling some units out of China that included the case, but, and I didn't even know if those were actually real FIO CP13s, but you have your accessories here. But the most important part, let's take out the unit itself. It's in a nice little plastic bag here. Kind of soft. Oh yeah. Turn it around this way. Would you look at that? Isn't that beautiful? And this unit, this is aluminum. It's all aluminum. Which is nice. And here we have The headphone jack. This is a USB-C connector and this is the volume knob. This is actually a cover for the window here that fits over that protects the window, the cassette window from getting scratched. This is most likely plastic but that's nice to have because 
on a lot of the older units, a lot of the units that I own, you know, eventually the player would get scratched. In the case that is included with this, protects the unit too. So if you can find one of those, I definitely recommend it. I'm noticing that there are no screws to access the inside of the cassette players. So it doesn't look like it's repairable in case something were to go wrong or you wanted to do a do-it-yourself repair. And this does have an internal lithium battery, so it runs on a charge. So I'm assuming that the unit itself only lasts the life of the battery. I don't know if these batteries can be replaced or not. Okay, let's open the door of the cassette player. It's kind of sticky. Look at that. On the inside there. Close is pretty nice. Okay. The buttons feel pretty good. Oh wow, it's actually somewhat charged, which is nice. So I can start listening to it right away. Nice. Let's take a look at the accessories. Okay, so all that's in here is the USB C cable for charging. I'm not sure of the charging time on this. I'm sure I can find out once I go through the manual. But this is it. The FIO CP13 stereo cassette player with an all aluminum shell. So the cassette mechanisms that FIO is using for the CP13 it's the Tanishing clone mechanism, which isn't the best or the worst. The cassette head is the ES4201 stereo cassette head, which is a two-track single direction head. So single direction means no auto reverse. But I found out a couple years ago that auto reverse isn't actually good for your cassette head. When your cassette head turns or Even the gears in the unit reverse. I heard somewhere that that is actually not good for your player, which means you must manually turn the tape over to the other side when listening to a cassette. I'm okay with that. There is an azimuth screw to adjust the azimuth of the head. Also, the speed adjustment is also inside here. I don't know if I'm able to get it in the shot here, but you can adjust the speed, I believe, right here with uh, maybe a screwdriver head, a Phillips head. It has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This unit does not have Bluetooth capabilities, and I don't mind that either. It's an analog unit, so Let's keep it analog. Above that, you have the USB-C port. And here, this is the volume knob, which has a really nice drag to it. Feels high quality. And there's your arrow indicating which direction to increase the volume. The VOCP-13, it's a basic stereo cassette player. It serves one purpose, and I'm okay with that. And this unit is capable of playing all cassette types, from ferric oxide, chrome, metal. It doesn't include the tape selector or the Dolby noise reduction switch. And I never use that feature that much anyway, the Dolby. 
I believe they did away with it altogether, even on other units. What's nice about this particular unit, it does have a brass flywheel on the interior, which allows for smoother rolling of the tape and the other, and the other gears that operate the unit. So rumor has it that Theo tried to compare the color and the design of this particular color and unit to the Sony TPS-L2, which was the first Walkman to be introduced in 1979. And I have one right here. We can compare the two. Quick story behind this unit here. I purchased this unit back in 2001 off of eBay. And guess how much it cost me back then? I paid $60 for this Sony TPS-L2. Nowadays, these fetch several hundreds of dollars. The last time I checked, the unit does power on. I bought it as is when I bought it 23 years ago. So the belts needed to be replaced. I never actually played it and used it to listen to cassettes, but I mainly purchased it, you know, just to have a relic from the past that started um, the portable music fad. And I knew one day that these would increase in value, and I was right. They definitely have, and a lot of that's due to, I think it was a movie called Guardian of the Galaxy, where they featured the Sony TPSL2 on the awesome mix cassette, and right after that, these became popular again, and it's quite difficult to get your hands on one nowadays, but I'm glad that I was able to purchase this when I did. Even back then, there were several bids on it, but I got it for $60. And this is all aluminum here. It's made in Japan, unlike the FIO <laughs> CP13. And I can do a separate review video. You notice they have Walkman on here. I think the prototypes for the original units did not have Walkman on it. Instead, it. instead, it said stereo. But you have stereo engraved on the back here. And believe it or not, this part is actually plastic up here. Before buying the unit, I always thought that this was metal too, but yeah, this is actually, it feels like plastic, but this part is metal. It's kind of bent in some places. But yeah, this is my Sony TPS-L2, circa probably 1979, so that's two years my senior. I bought this unit around the same time on eBay. This is the Sony WM-F18. This is a pretty decent sounding unit. This one came out in 1985, so that's almost 40 years ago. But I actually used this unit as a daily player at one time, and it sounded pretty good. The casing is plastic, and it does have auto reverse and graphic EQ on it, and an AM FM radio by Sony. And this is another one here. This is the, it actually looks better if I put a cassette inside. You can probably see it better. This is the Sony WM-F77. This unit came out around 1986. This part is metal, but the rest of it is plastic. And both of these are Japanese manufactured as well. Notice there's a battery compartment here. Remember these, these little, um, I don't know, a strap or ribbon that you would pull to eject the batteries? When I took the FIO out of the box, it had a little thing like that. This right here, it kind of reminds me of the battery compartments that used to be on the old Walkmans where you would eject the batteries. You can easily eject them instead of having to dig with your fingers. 
mess up your manicure like mine is right now. <laughs> okay, so the fun part, cassettes. These are Sony HF cassettes. These were manufactured between 1986 and 1987. And this is a pretty decent sounding ferric, ferric cassette, type one. I found these on eBay not too long ago. So if I'm in the mood for recording, I can make a mixtape for myself, but I can't think of anything to record right now. So you know, I'll just keep them in their wrappers. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I grew up during the 80s and 90s, so I used cassettes regularly. It was a major part of my life during that time. And unlike a lot of people, I kept my cassettes. I never really truly stopped listening to cassettes. Of course, I don't listen to them as often as I used to, but every once in a while, you know, I will listen to one of my old cassettes and let me tell you, they sound fantastic. This is a mixtape. I had I never labeled it, but this is one of my mixtapes that I recorded 80s music on it around 1996. Notice it says Hits of the 80s, Volume 11. There was a show called the Retro Request Show that would come on on Sunday nights every week at 9 o'clock locally. And they played all 80s music, album cuts included, for three hours on Sunday. And I made a lot of great tapes from that show. And the host of the show, the DJ, his name was Amadeus. I don't know if he's still around locally or if he's still in radio, but yeah, that was such a great show. I would look forward to that show every Sunday when I was growing up. It aired from 1995 up until 2001. Yeah, it was a sad Sunday when I found out that they were no longer going to be doing the Retro Request Show. But I still have all of the great tapes that I recorded from the show. And I'm glad I kept my cassettes because I put a lot of work into making these cassettes and they still sound great. You know, you have to have patience for cassettes if you want to listen to them and not all cassettes are equal. Not all cassette players are equal either. A good sounding cassette on a decent cassette deck will sound amazing. This is a Type 2 cassette, by the way. You notice I took the tabs out to protect the tape, but this is Type 2. It has the tabs plus the little opening on it. This one here, this is a metal tape. I recorded this back in early 1997. For that weekend, the radio was playing disco songs from the disco era, the 70s into the early 80s. They were calling it the Funky Weekend. Yes, these are all the tapes that I'm going to be listening to first on my Fio CP13. And this is a group called Starpoint. I believe they were from Baltimore, Maryland. My dad actually bought this tape. This album came out back in 1985, and I bought this copy during the late 90s, I think, from a used tape shop. Still sounds great. I remember when my dad brought this album home, this cassette, and this was their best album. I heard some of their other albums. They weren't as good as this one. This one's called Restless, and it came out in 1985. I have this on vinyl as well. And this here is the soundtrack on cassette to one of my favorite movies. This is an 80s movie. It's from 1985. It's called Just One of the Guys. Some of you are probably familiar with this movie. A lot of you probably are, but the soundtrack is very rare and very hard to find. I have a copy on vinyl, CD, and cassette, and I originally found this cassette on eBay back in 2001, and I was trying to bid on it because there were several bidders on it, and we had dial-up internet at the time. My younger sister, she was a teenager, 
and she used the phone a lot back then. This is before any of us had cell phones. I think my dad may have had one at the time, only my dad. But a call came in and I was disconnected from the internet and lost the auction. Fast forward to 10 years later in 2011, I found this tape on eBay for a dollar. No bidders, and I bid it on it and I won the auction. Yeah, and the Starpoint cassette actually looks the same. They're both on the same label, Electra, which I believe now is defunct. This right here is a great soundtrack album. You have groups like Shalimar, Midnight Star, Berlin, Dwight Twilly, Ronnie Spector. Really good. It's out of print now, but if you could find one maybe online somewhere selling or anywhere, I highly recommend, if you like 80s music, I highly recommend that you check out the Just One of the Guys soundtrack. No one really talks about the soundtrack to this movie, but this was a good movie. If you haven't seen it already, it's a great 80s movie. In my opinion, it's better than The Breakfast Club. Here we have Alison Krauss. This album came out in 1995. I probably purchased this probably around 2013 from a used CD record and cassette shop in Colorado Springs. I actually saw Alison Krauss at Red Rocks in 2017. I ended up getting a free ticket to the show at Red Rocks Amphitheater. And it was such a great show. I was the only black person there, but I always loved Alison Krauss. I love her. She has that angelic voice. Her speaking voice sounds nothing like her singing voice, but yeah, Alison Krauss in Union Station. I believe this is what Union Station, but that's her band. But her show at Red Rocks was good. Alison Krauss was the headlining act that night, and David Gray opened for her. He played a great show too, but that was a great experience at Red Rocks. And I ended up getting a free ticket to the show, which was nice, being an Alison Krauss fan. So this is it, the Fio CP13 stereo cassette player. You know, I really like that the younger generation, Gen Z, is getting into cassettes, which is nice. I'm not expecting cassettes to entirely replace digital. Digital is convenient, and you have more options. But as human beings, we're analog, and it's nice to go back to that format. Physical media is definitely making a comeback now, and cassettes, vinyl, are gaining a lot of popularity. So that's really nice. So we'll see what happens in years to come, but hopefully they can start making quality cassette players again. And Fio is definitely off to a great start based on what I've seen so far. I haven't yet heard it, but I'm excited. I really am. It would be nice also to see Sony release a quality cassette player, even if they re-release the TPSL 2 Wouldn't that be nice with better quality products? This sold, I think, for around $139 back in 1979. You do the math, what that is in 2024 dollars, but it would be nice if even Apple decided to release a quality cassette player. We need more quality cassette decks available, and you know, hopefully, due to the popularity of the Fio CP13, that other companies will follow suit. Take care, everyone. Please leave your comments and like the video. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Happy listening.